Hello, and welcome to the second day of 12th grade English. I made this video so that those of you who couldn't view our class or be in our class can see it, do the work, and then be done and not have to worry about getting kicked in and out of our Zoom room. So um, let's go. Today is, what do you say? I'm gonna need a little bit more feedback from people about how everything is going. So in your day two of your journal, your big Google Doc, which will be Wednesday, it's your place to just explain how this whole experience has been for you. And then if you have any ideas for how to make it better, that will be a big help for all of us, I think. So that's the theme of today, but we're gonna get inside of it and figure out what other things we need to know. First, I want you to find that Google Doc that we started yesterday. If you didn't start it, no big deal. You'll find it in the 12th grade section for my course. So it's gonna be listed as an assignment. You might also have it from yesterday, in which case you can just open up that Google Doc and keep typing. The beauty of Google Docs is you don't have to submit it to me and you don't have to tell me that it's done. I'll just see that it's done, so that's nice. In Wednesday, I want you to type this done. I have something to say about. All right, don't do anything yet. We're gonna watch a video first. So this is a fun little clip. Okay, so I love that because Snoop Dogg is offering this really rich commentary on a really interesting scene in nature. The original text is simply a very intense like classical music track playing alongside of that. And so it's replacing this maybe drama building music with drama building narration. And he doesn't exactly have tons to say about the biology of these creatures, nor does the original narrator, David Attenborough. Instead, it's just somebody offering their thoughts and in a way that's really entertaining. So my whole point is you don't have to be an expert to have something to say. And in fact, in many ways, it's better when you aren't an expert yet because you have this fresh perspective to offer. The deeper you get into a content, the more you have to say about it, the uh, more interesting perhaps you can be with the facts that you know. And I don't wanna discount that, that's really important. But when you have an opinion and it's not necessarily well-researched, it's still okay to begin there and to move from that space into research and figure out what you wanna know. And that will be the theme of our entire course. We're gonna be using a lot of different texts and resources to jar your opinion, figure out what do you think about this, and then task you to begin exploring, all right, so what happened? In that, I want you to open up those big Google Docs if you haven't already, and answer this question or respond to this stem. Write the words, I have something to say about, and now under Wednesday's class, finish the sentence. What do you have something to say about? What is something you have a strong opinion about? It doesn't have to be something specific in subject matter. It could just be a pet peeve you have when somebody does something that bothers you in this way. It could be a really deep felt issue, uh, something that you're really passionate about. Or it could just be something you consider yourself to be more informed about. What do you have something to say about? I have something to say about content-based education. I think we should be teaching very specific pieces of content and asking for opinions instead of making everything completely driven by you. I should give you something too. And I pledge to do that, give you a little bit or even a lot of something that I think is worth your time. And then I'd like to see what you say. I have something to say about that. I have something to say about what I think phones and technology is doing to our time, I have opinions about what happens when I feel like we're all on these devices too much. I have something to say about what I'm gonna call nature deficit disorder. I think really is great to get outside. It does things for the soul, 
for anxiety, for health that you just can't get done anywhere else. So those are some things I have something to say about. What about you? You can pause this video to complete it right now, or you can just know that that is part of your homework for tomorrow. And then in the same space under Wednesdays, I want you to go ahead and write the hardest part about Zoom is, and it doesn't have to be in the chat, instead use your Wednesday entry. It's okay if what you have to offer is I can't get on Zoom. That's the hardest part of Zoom. Actually, that's really helpful for me. So it's just a space where I'm gonna start collecting information that helps me as a teacher make some decisions. So those are your entries for Wednesday. I have something to say about, and the hardest part of Zoom is. These will get progressively harder, but we wanna start light and we wanna make sure we're getting everybody on the same page to start the year. So um, at this point, you can just listen. I wanna talk a little bit about how you can contact me and checking your own email. I've been really impressed with uh, the level of communication so far from you 12th graders. Like it's basically like dealing with colleagues and adults. Uh, you've been really responsive and eager to be in touch with us. So I'm just gonna encourage you to keep doing that. If you want help um, forwarding your personal email to your school email or vice versa, so you only have to check one email account, then let me know, I can help you with that. I, it's a simple setting on your Gmail accounts that will allow them to just kind of merge or it will auto forward your school email to your personal email. But um, contacting me is something you should do whenever you have questions. When you don't need to contact me, you don't need to let us know if you're missing class. It's a strange sentence I never thought I'd say, but it's not necessary in this world. If you can't get on Zoom, just do the work and make sure the work is submitted or at least in your Google Doc and you're done. Um, I understand that people aren't gonna be able to come to class on a daily or weekly basis, but um, I don't really need you to tell me about it. And I hope that that is a real piece of freedom for you. I hope you hear that and go, oh, that's great. Like, I don't need to contact her every single time that I think I'm gonna be late or that Zoom kicks me out and then kicks me back in or that I never made it in the first place. It's your time. If you can be there, that's awesome. We're gonna build things together. And I think it will make your homework when we get into more intense homework easier if you were in class. But if you can't be there, you can't be there and you can log on see what the work was try to finish it on your own and then if you can't ask questions so that's my bit about contacting me i don't want to dissuade you from contacting me you should contact me if you have questions but you don't need to contact me simply to tell me you won't be in the zoom session because i just understand completely why that might be the case all right moving on we're going to tour schools you really quick right here and I'm gonna bring that up on my screen. So we have Schoology courses up here at the top. Hopefully this is a screen that's really familiar to you by now. I know it's imperfect. There's lots of crashes that have already happened, but all the same, I have tried to organize our content there. So I'm just gonna make sure you know where to find it. I'm gonna click on one of my English sections. They're designed the exact same. So here is the Schoology page. At the very top, you have our Zoom link and our passcode. That will never change. You have our daily agenda. This will always be the most recent day on top. So this was today's class, for example. Then you move into this, weekly objectives, weekly content, and makeup work. And I want to open that up for you. This is a quick summary of everything we've done in a week's time. The most recent week will always be on top. It's going to be a quick little note about what dates we're looking at and what our introductions were for the week. What exactly did we do? And then we'll get into more granular detail where we list it day by day by day. So all this is, is the agenda, but the agenda for the week. And under each thing, I've linked it to the document that you'll need. So there's the Ben Franklin reading linked. And here's a document that you can use to link your response. The syllabus here on Wednesday is linked. So you could theoretically come to this document if you weren't in class and get everything from this page that we used without needing to go inside of any of the other folders. 
We just wanted a one-stop shop where everything was available to you at the touch of a button. So here it is. Then after that, we get into the more granular, I have to go back, one of the reasons I don't like Schoology, folders that are gonna show you every single thing that we did in each day. So for today, we would click on, for example, day two, materials and assignments. And in that day, you'll find the slideshow that I used for the class, along with whatever that homework was for the, the day. So here, if I open it up, you can scroll till you get to the part that we did in class. And you see these two assignments. I have something to say about, finish the sentence in your BGD. And the hardest part of Zoom is. So um, it's a quick way, I guess, to get everything you need if the video didn't do it for you. But the video that I record is an attempt for me to explain that to you. Over here, you've got your only assignment right now, the BGD, which is a daily assignment. And then if there are other major assessments, I'll post them here, but you'll learn about those for me along the way. They won't be surprises. We'll only have two or three major assignments per unit. So on a given day, the most important thing you can do is your daily BGD work. All right, so back to our slides. Talk about resilience. This is gonna be the last bit of class. I've been so impressed, like I said already, with how you all are navigating this very interesting space. It's why I love working with young people. I think it's okay to complain and it's okay to be frustrated, but I've spent a little time with you and already that talk has been more optimistic, more solution oriented and more positive than a lot of the talk I have with adults who want to wonder, well, what on earth is this going to be? How are we going to do this? It's as if young people aren't as concerned with those problems because you already know there's a thousand different ways to do something right. And that is resilience, knowing that there's 15 ways to get through this problem. And you don't have to do it the right way, so long as you get through it a way. So I leave you with this video. Connor and Kaden, meeting a challenge. It's wonderful, and I'd like you to watch it just for your own emotional health. See you later.